Hello and welcome to the, the show. And uh, today I am joined by um, a wonderful man and actor who was in the, uh, in the terms of Doctor Who at least, um, but we'll go on to other stuff he's done as well. But he is known as uh, uh, the character Larry Nightingale uh, in the very ever, so, ever popular uh, episode of Doctor Who called Blink, um, which has um, uh, been. Uh, regularly touted as one of the best episodes of the modern era of Doctor Who. Um, so, Finley, uh, thank you very much for joining me. How are you doing today? Hello. Good morning. Hi, 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 hi. Hello. <laughs> Did you know that, F Finley, recently I was, uh, I, I heard that um, uh, they did a big, a massive, like, poll on in Doctor Who magazine. Yes. Of, uh, uh, so they everyone, like people, all the readers would vote, and they put all the episodes up of Doctor Who. And uh, uh, then they whittled it down and they whittled it down and got yeah. the most popular in terms of viewers. Yeah. And in top the top ten, there was Blink at number six. So wow. it's it, it still incredibly me. popular. Yeah, yeah it's the, the quality of the writing and the quality of the idea, the simplicity of the idea and the... Um, the way in which the monsters, as if you want to call them that, can come back again and again and again. And just the that idea is is so unique and so special. And the way it's um the way it's strung together in that episode is is just fantastic. So yes, it's all down it's all down to the writing, I think, and the um and the simplicity of the idea. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. And the acting. Well, course. that's very kind, but yes, I mean, some of the acting, yes, I mean, that's, yes, I think we, we did a good job. I think we did a good job, but they're very, um, it, I, when you're an actor, it's, it, it's the easiest thing to say. It's very easy. It's much easier to act good writing than it is bad writing. Uh, yeah. Bad writing can be tough. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But when it's so clearly defined and... Um, written so well it's it's uh it's just a dream oh absolutely yeah um i want to to uh, i know you also worked you didn't just do a doctor on television but you've actually done it on uh on audio as well big finish productions who, who yeah have been... big, finish are, big finish are just incredible in terms of the way they they pick up they sort of like harvested the seeds and they've taken them away to their own sort of laboratories and plantations and farms and they've they've grown them and grown them into different crops and different stories and different they've just expanded it um uh quite brilliantly and yes I've 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 been called in a couple of times there and they're all it's just always a dream and you're really aware when working with those guys and working with that community how much you're dealing with fans of the show and you're just you feel very um privileged and very connected to the the people who make the show what it is which is the uh which is the fans yeah yeah they they, they all started out you know uh doing you know sort of fan productions sort of uh, amateur productions and um things like yeah. that and working in conventions and and then working their way up into you know audio exactly. production, so they've been yeah, exactly. a long, long time involved in some in some capacity. You know, yeah, and it's just a very kind family, and you just you just get called back again and again and again. It's just very um, it's very nice. A couple of times a year, you just drop in, and it's uh, it's a very good it's a very good thing to do. Really nice. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's lovely. Yeah, um, <clears throat> particularly in this time, you know, also during the pandemic, um. <clears throat> I yeah, I think a lot of people. A... a lot of people discovered in the pandemic the power. I think that was a huge, a huge upsurge in all kind of in all media and in all uh, television, films, and and you know all those places where you get those things. But in in audio as well, definitely, uh, it it really we although we were in a um, we were we were all going through the same thing. I think there was a lot of uh, narrowing down and and. Um, being alone with yourself as an individual and experiencing those stories on an individual basis, I think was really, um, was really an important part of us kind of staying sane during that period. And I think yeah. it was, 
really important yeah yeah um now uh, um you were if I, i'm interested to know that you were born in the netherlands i was yeah my yeah. father worked for uh shell and he was there and he they had a, a place out there and he was um so the mo both my parents are scottish hence the name finlay but uh he was working out there in the 70s and then i sort of came along and then i was only there for a year and then i um and then i moved back i haven't i mean i can't speak any dutch they can still speak dutch um but i have been back i've been back to the flat where i was where i first uh came back to actually my my uh, my wife and i kind of knocked on the door and said hello and actually the guy invited us in and sort of had a little wander around i think his wife was a little bit put out by that but right. um yeah we uh we went back there for a holiday a couple of years ago it was very nice oh lovely i've never been there i'd, lo I'd love to go though yeah yeah it's very nice very very pretty very um and the people are um very practical very down to earth um very very nice yeah really nice yeah you didn't try those funny cakes over there did you or anything like that i did yeah. no uh <laughs> I, I have had previous when working out there and i uh i can't i can't do, <laughs> can't do that <laughs> it's all a bit much yeah it's all a bit much yeah um now uh, the uh um some of the the, the the other parts you played on television and so on are there particular ones that stand out for you um, in terms it, of like you know, I, I sort satisfaction of, or whatever, you know? It's a kind of, I did a show a while ago um, called The Body Farm, which was meant to be this spin-off of uh, uh, Waking the Dead, which was a sort of forensic cop show. And I, um, I, I really fell in love with my character. I, I played a kind of, a, a guy called Oggy, who was this sort of forensic kind of nerd guy who would grow... Uh, experiments on his arm to do experiments on he was the kind of the kind of the office nerd kind of computer genius uh and i really really enjoyed that and there was lots of forensic stuff and i did lots of research into sort of forensic science so i went to a went to a medical class and saw them sort of a dissection class where they were studying studying the human anatomy and and that was really fascinating um and uh, I was also in a show called Life Begins, which is was a was a show that met my, my wife on that job. She was producing that job, and uh, and what else? There was another show that was a real caught fire in its own way, and kind of having a um, a real following, which is a show called How Not to Live Your Life, um, written and starring a, a comedian called Dan Clark, where I played again. I played a rather larger than life character. Um, and I based a lot of what a lot of what I did with him was based on a, one of the characters from The Apprentice, one of the guys who was on The Apprentice and was a complete plonker. Um, and I, I got my hair to be just like his. And um, yeah, those those sort of slightly out there characters are all are always the ones that, <laughs> that stick in the that stick in the memory and you hold uh, your dearest in your affections. Yeah, yeah. Um, have you done much theatre? Do you, do you like theatre? I love or? it when I do it. I haven't yeah. done it in a while. I did a play before the pandemic uh, at the Hampstead Theatre, which was great. Uh, one of my first things when I first came to London was a show. I, I did a show at the Royal Court, a Jess Butterworth play, which was a, a small role, but it involved me standing naked on stage at the very end and reciting a, a poem by Shelley. Um and I didn't really realise at the time kind of how big a deal it was. Uh, Ray Winston was in it, uh, Jessica Hines, Paul Ritter, sort of brilliant, brilliant actors. And um, it was a really, really fantastic experience. I mean, any any time you have the opportunity to work with new writing and new writers, I think is um, is great. I've done some. I did Shakespeare at the Almeida. I did a production of The Merchant of Venice where. It was all set in Las Vegas, and we all we all did it in American accents, which was fantastic. But um, yeah, I, I'm uh, now my my kids are a bit older. I'm I'm really looking to um to get back on stage again. Yeah, yeah. Um, some many people say you know that's one of the best ways of um learning your 
your craft is doing things. Yeah, you really have to be on it and you really have to, uh, you get time to rehearse, which often you don't get in television, uh, which mm. is which is a joy. And um, it just makes everything so much uh, easier. And, and also you get the, the kind of the feedback and the rush every night and you're with a company for a really long time period of time so it's yeah it is it's just a great it's a great thing to do so <clears throat> excuse me in television now in modern television uh, um compared to what it was when i was growing up which was more or less like um four or five cameras really healthy yeah. cameras in studio which couldn't move very much and it was and that's basically how things were shot <laughs> you know but um with more rehearsal time as well often they would get a week mm -hmm. or something you know before they do yeah. an episode but um, in modern television, how how much has it jumped now? Is it more? Is it mostly single camera now? Yeah, and do you get mostly, any rehearsal you time? Second, you might have a second camera, but it's mainly the second camera is normally not on the actor or the actor. The second camera can be on sort of wider stuff and picking up different things. But usually it's single cameras. And the single, the biggest thing is now um, is the quality of the the cameras and the lenses and shooting on digital um, means that you can shoot in all sorts of lighting conditions. So you can move a lot faster and you are much more mobile. So, I mean, often the television from the 70s, certainly the 60s, you, you were filming a, a studio, an actors in a studio, almost like you were filming a play with these huge sort of tanks of cameras kind of moving yeah. around. And, and now, you know, the, the, the camera, while still heavy, uh, can be operated and, and moved. There's a lot more opportunity to have handheld stuff. And, um, and it is just simply um, how easy it is to, to shoot on digital now. That yeah. is, and it allows you to move much faster uh, with much less light and have much more... I suppose, uh, artistic uh, creativity rather than the creativity being how on earth are we going to capture this in, um, uh, in the time we have? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> so in terms of, um, it, it, I'm thinking it, with one camera, uh, um, it's the, the amount of material that you would get shot in a day. Would it be, I imagine it wouldn't be a huge amount with it, really. Uh, I mean, yeah. it really depends. It, it, if you look at television versus film, I mean, film, you 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 will take a long time to get it right, and certainly, like commercials, you'll take forever because it's about the picture. But in television, you can you can move quickly. I mean, eight pages uh, for for a drama, or or maybe a bit less. It all depends upon the. It all depends on the shot, unless you're working on the, you know, soaps or something where you have to churn it out. Mm. Um, yeah, that that you 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 have more. Uh, yeah, it, it's still so. Sometimes you know you still have. There's never a day where uh, on most jobs where you have loads of time left over at the end of the day. You're always still chasing it because you know that obviously the, the schedules change to reflect how much can be done so there's never it's not like you're it's bought uh, you loads of time or less pressure uh, yeah. in many ways i'm sure it creates more pressure but um but it does allow uh more interesting setups interesting angles in interesting use of cameras yes yeah um now let's get on to uh, um blink okay mm. uh, um how it, is it the general process i guess were you asked to come in an audition um, yeah you audition? know so the way the gen the way it works is you know a, a, a casting director who's been hired by the show to find all the actors will either ask a <clears throat> agents or people they know who have you got who could play this role or they will put a they'll put a uh a, a um a shout out on Spotlight, which is the sort of cut the directory. I think for a show like Doctor Who, it's much more secret and you've got to really, because it's such a popular show, you, you, there's a lot more um, 
of the casting department, Andy Pryor, finding um, people that they know and agents that they know. And yeah, I got the invite and I got told to come along on, on audition and I auditioned and then um, they liked it and they said, can you go back and can you change the accent slightly? And then can you, and then I did it again. And then they, yeah, they offered it to me and hurrah. So yeah, I, I wasn't aware at the time, obviously how big a thing it was going to become or even how, um, even how great an episode it was. It, I, I knew it looked like a really good, clever piece of writing. And I was aware of uh, Doctor Who in, the, in, in in terms of my understanding and then it coming back and, and with Christopher Eccleston and having a kind of beginning to to generate noise around it as a as a as a concept but I think it was it was David who really accelerated that David Tennant and made it um you know uh become what it is today yeah of course it was written by Stephen Moffat as well yeah exactly so that mm. was that was the sort of the key thing I mean the key as I said the key is in the writing and the writing was just fantastic and um you know, right place, right time, and all that. Yeah, you seem to have a knack of um, of um, creating these villains, if you like. You know, these in Doctor Who mm. that seemed everyday, mundane things, um, but but he could make them frightening to, for kids. So you've got just statues, that's a, that's and you've got you know much, gas masks and this, that, and the other. You know, it's um, much more frightening if something is a. <clears throat> an adaptation or a twist on something that we already know rather than here is a monster from a different universe or a different planet and this is what they do that's that's harder to lodge inside the head you've got to do sort of more work but the 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 more simple the idea the more you take stuff that is around you and just turn it in a way that becomes disturbing um yeah, the more opportunity you have to to make things that are scarier. Yeah, yeah, it's great that I, I, he he just sort of um, had his finger on the pulse with how kids would kids' yeah. imaginations would you know buy into it. You know, mm. when children himself at the time that were young, he'd be often asking them, but "What what, what makes what, you what, scared? What, what they're running ideas by?" Yeah. yeah, yeah, he would be getting feedback from them, which and uh, yeah. it's very interesting how you know. To tap into that psyche, yeah, yeah, um, and uh, so of your, you didn't. It was it was what they call now um, that episode you were in. They call it a Doctor Light episode, where yeah, the main it character was, wasn't very much. Another yeah. episode at the time, yeah. So David was in another one more, and we just pop in. So I think there was always one. There was one episode where he's not the main driver of the narrative yeah and it was this one so yeah we he was filming nights i think and and then he just sort of popped in here and there to do the the bit on the videotape and then the very bit at the end and that was when i sort of began to realize wow this show really is a big deal just because the number of people on the on the street in cardiff you know word had got out yeah. and uh they were um yeah he was just mobbed yeah. and just had to hide uh yeah. in the um in the in the video store where we were working oh wow so it's a bit like being a rock star for a little while or something. a little bit you saw what it was like wow yeah that's intense that really is intense so you only had a really you only had a very small scene with david really didn't you there was a bit outside the shop at the end toward exactly the end. yeah 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 and then we met him we met him on the day he filmed he filmed the the stuff that's on the video the easter egg he filmed that um when we were around carrie mulligan and i were, were were around i'm not sure what we were doing um but we were we, we met him there that's we met him properly to say hi to him. and how about uh uh freema Ajerman? how did you find her did you get to talk yeah to she her? was great i mean she was great so full of beans full of energy and um yeah, she could. You could just tell. And again, when she was on camera, you went, "Oh, I get it." Yeah. So yeah, a pro, just just fantastic. I know Andy Pryor is to this day still in love with her because she is. Um, I think she's a fantastic. She's on a she's in a, a show at the moment actually in um, uh, the, the Lyric in Hammersmith, uh, and um, yeah, she's she's great. Oh, awesome! Yeah, 
Um, and Kerry Mulligan, of course, um, you know, your your co-star there, she she went on to do some quite great yeah. things, after, you know, on the, I think yeah, on the back of that. A, she was definitely grabbed at the right time by that yeah. show. She'd done a bit of telly and then she was about to go in re into rehearsals for a play at the Royal Court. She was about to do the sequel at the Royal Court. And then that went to New York and that was the, the beginning of her really um, establishing herself in America and doing those, um, doing those American, American films. Yeah. 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 She's, um, I, I, some people say, some of the actors say that, that worked on certain shows. It doesn't happen with everything I know, but uh, where you sometimes form such a bond that you keep in touch for years after the fact. Uh, did that happen? Yeah, we did for did a bit. Happen? We kept in touch for a bit. It's funny, mm. we kept in touch for a bit, but um, I bumped into David a couple of times. But, um, you know, Carrie and I were in touch for a bit, particularly we had to do a kind of Doctor Who redacted kind of um, behind the scenes kind of thing as well. And we kind of, we definitely met up for that, but I haven't talked to her in a while, to be honest. Yeah. Well, I hope she's doing well. <laughs> I'm sure she's doing absolutely perfectly. <laughs> um. You did now. You did. Uh, I'm interested with 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 the setup for the angels in the series. Yeah. Um, how many were were just static props, and how many were actually? As I remember it, there were about four static props, maybe five, and about four performers mm. who were physical performers, uh, acrobats, uh, and they were very very skilled. And they would be there to, if you needed to do a quick move or you needed to flesh out, literally, um, a a scene where there was more than one. And they they knew, uh, the director knew that they could hold that position as if they were a statue because of their yeah. because of their strength and their um their training. Um, but yeah, it was strange. It's all kind of the movement is all in the cut, you know, there's a bit where I, I'm looking at one, I look away for a second and look back and it's, uh, it's all, it, it, you don't see the angel move. It's just cut from there to there, to there, to there, to there. And the, and the, and the use of the music is very, um, is very clever. Yeah. Yes. Very clever. Yeah. M m um, visual and music have to work together really well and That's create great. that. That, that atmosphere or that anxiety or whatever it might be, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, but the quick cuts that were happening with you and Carrie, you know, uh, when you were being attacked by them, was very effective because you had like like the shadow, the light going off, then the the light would come on brief and they're nearer, you know, that, that all those sort of um, clever cuts. Yeah, were... and you weren't really aware. It was only when I went to do a thing called ADR, which is to the where you record some additional dialogue, uh, and I saw the cut and I went oh now it all makes sense because at the time you don't really because the director has got all the cuts planned in her head and she got there to there to there, to there and it's all storyboarded but you don't realize quite uh quite how it's all going to knit together and it's only when you see it that you realize just how sort of terrifying it is um and how well done it is yeah yeah so at the very end of it, uh, uh, Finley, at the, the the very last shot, where um, you're talking to to David and Freema, and they're off yeah. on another adventure, um, and Kerry uh, uh, holds your hand, and you go back into the into yeah. the, the shop. Was that was that possibly in your head, or maybe in Stephen's head at the time, Stephen Moffat's head, that you you and Sally Sparrow would have gone on to do more adventures together, perhaps? Yeah, I, I, maybe uh, you'd have yeah. to ask Stephen. I mean, I think, yeah. I think Carrie wasn't up for it. I think she was doing her own thing. But yes, I think that was, you know, that was, uh, that could have been something definitely that yeah. um that could have that could have gone. Yeah, definitely. I think they would have been great together. Yeah. Well, I mean, the it, the names it's poet it's poetry, isn't it? It's, yeah, Sparrow, Sparrow and Nightingale. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's it's just poetic, isn't it? You know, so um, yeah, um, yeah. I do. I did a I did a, a game called uh, the Lonely Assassins, where uh, 
where we meet Larry again and the angels are back. Um, and um, yes, it turned out that, 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 that Sally and Larry in, in, in their, in their version had not stayed together. Um, and uh, Larry had got married to somebody else. And then um, she had been attacked by the angels and sent back in time. And um, yeah, there was a whole, so there's a little coda to that if you want to read into it. Mm. But who knows? Who knows in Stephen's mind what would what would happen next? So that you did that video game, didn't you? The Lonely Assassins. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, Lonely Assassins. Yeah. What was it like for voicing for so for video? Um, I've uh, not well, seen I it. You see, do, so I don't know. I didn't but... have to do video. I did. I think one bit of audio recording. It was just basically watching the show again and sort of attuning your ear to the um, to the. Uh, to the character again so i i sounded like him yeah. uh that's all it was really it was just and once you've got that it's fairly kind of straightforward um and it was written again it was written well and, and it was easy to access uh that character um once uh once i'd watched it one more time yeah um you came back to doctor who again as i say uh, uh for big finish productions uh, and you did various uh, different characters and yeah, different yeah. and so on. Um, I'm going to. I just wanted to touch upon all the ones I I know about. I think there was three, three or four yeah. ones that you did. Um, and in the series, the, 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 these characters were uh, actually established. You know, um, yeah. uh, the Paternoster Gang. The Paternoster Gang. Yeah, I've, they've just sent me the the latest CD. Yeah, it's lovely. I've been a big finish. They will send you the stuff. And yeah, so I did. I did um, Spectre Cotton in there. That was lovely. And then um, and then I did a couple of episodes of, or one episode of uh, The Robots, which uh, Claire Rushbrook and Nicola Walker. And then I did a couple of characters in, 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 in uh, Tom Baker's versions where you go out to, to record near where he lives, actually. And... Um, and do those, but they were they were two separate uh, dramas and two quite different characters. So um, yeah, so different different thumbs in different pies. I'm sure when the Pastanocta uh, gang come back again, I'll be I shall be called upon. This Inspector Cotton will return. Uh, right. Yeah. Um. When you were doing these ones, uh, Finley, what, what, were you actually together in studio? What, 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 were these done remotely? Uh, when we did the robots, I think we were all remotely recorded. So I've got a home studio, right, which is basically huh. something I've cobbled together, which is you know the mic, obviously, and the bits you need to to get it to talk to your camera, and then very and, and sort of soundproofing from foam and wine boxes and duvets and all that sort of stuff. So that was recorded upstairs. When we did the Paternoster Gang, that was in a studio in London with all the guys that were there. And then the other one, as I said, was was going out to a studio and recording it. Um, and it, and and yeah, radio drama is a very different beast. It's uh, it's very lovely, but it's a it's a different beast, and you're very aware that you are. Uh, it's all about the vocal performance mm. and you can be wearing scruffy clothes and have not had a shower that day, but you, you can still produce what they need. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, um, have you done a lot of radio drama prior to, prior to I did, it? um, I did, I did six months with the BBC radio, uh, drama rep company, which was great. I got to work with a load of fantastic actors on a couple of really, really nice shows. And I've gone back a couple of times to some of the producers, so I, I do do a little bit of that. And then I've also um, worked for a, a company who've done various sort of play for today's on um, on on Radio 3. There was a very good, I think it's available at the moment, but called um, The Song of the Cossacks, which was a historical drama. It's incredibly moving. And that was, um, that was done. I did that earlier in the year. And that was yeah. fantastic story, sort of epic and, and heartbreaking story. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I always found that were amazing were the um, productions where they would do a, a, a period drama on yeah. on, uh, on on radio. 
yeah those, some of those productions were amazing you know the the bbc productions and so on yeah that i mean uh, you know the, uh, the bbc now how to period do period drama whether it's on television or in film or, or yeah. on radio, just it's in it's in its dna it's just really good yeah i did a yeah. i did a show called the foresight saga and um that was uh just yeah really really well done yeah they really do have a talent for that don't they um so I've got to ask you, um, you've worked with Please. a lot. You, you, I've got to ask you this, um, uh, to speak to someone who's actually worked with this man. Uh, I mean, I'm assuming you did actually, were in, you were actually in the same room together, uh, working with Tom Baker. What was that yeah, like? I mean, it was wonderful. It was just sort of mm -hmm. this man from my childhood, and he has a twinkle and a charisma. Uh, I haven't worked with him twice. The, the same stories come up, but they're just genius, genius stories, and I won't... Um, well, the one I remember that he tells a lot was um, the one about him being on stage in a play, a touring play, and they were they were touring all around the UK, and and they were just kind of like, oof, trying to keep it interesting and keeping it alive. And he said he and the cast got into the habit where he wasn't talking at the time; he was listening to somebody, and he was putting spoon uh, sugar into his tea. And while this other person was talking, he just kept putting spoon after spoon. <laughs> And over the course of the run, it, it became a challenge to see how many teaspoons of sugar you could get in. And he said he 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 got it up to 32 once, uh, or maybe it was 40. It was a huge number, ridiculous number anyway. And then he put it in and, and stirred it and then sipped it and put it down and then added one. <laughs> <laughs> and the audience were in bits. Um, it's very naughty, drawing focus <laughs> like that on stage but it, the way he tells it was it was very he's just very charming and very lovable and and very loved so yeah lovely man oh that's like that's great and you do these things very i mean these these dramas are very rapidly made aren't they you're only like one or two days in the studio doing them a couple you? of days in the studio yeah. it's a well old machine like work out we'll record you and then you will do here 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 you know we'll read through it all once have a chat and then we'll go right we'll start here we normally get Tom done before lunchtime and then you can go and uh, doesn't like working in the afternoon, Tom. Uh, fair enough. Uh, and then he get off he goes. And then um, and then, yeah, we just we just get it done. Now, is it true about the I've, I've seen so many interviews with actors that work for Big Finish. And one one thing that comes up constantly is the lunches. Are they as legendary as uh, uh, people? They can name? be. Yeah, yeah, they can be. They can be, and they have been. I mean, there's no alcohol involved, I'm sure, like the, in the old days, you know, 20 That years. would be a different different story altogether than if there was. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, they yeah. can be very luxurious. Yeah. And the thing that's great about them, if you're doing them at a studio, is you get to hang out with all the other actors who were in the studio. During, one of my very uh, earliest experiences was walking around the corner and hearing this voice that was eerily familiar. And um, I went round the corner, and it was Brian Blessed. And it was in the oh. middle of a Brian Blessed anecdote about, and then I said, fucking hell. Um, and it was just wonderful. Uh, yeah. yeah, so that's, yeah, they are, they are the, the big finish lunches are extremely good. Yes, they are. Yeah. And made all the better, probably, for having Brian Blessed there for entertainment. Exactly, yeah. Not yeah. only is the food, the company is delightful yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah, those first few takes after lunch are always a little bit tricky. Yeah, I imagine so, because you're full up and everything. Uh, yeah, you have to kind of get into the zone again, don't you? Exactly. Yeah. You just have a sleep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so I have to ask you, Finley, um, uh, What's in the pipeline? If you're allowed to talk about anything, what do you, uh, you I'm not allowed else? to talk about things, but I'm I'm cooking away and I'm auditioning like mad. Yeah, and uh, yeah, there is there is always stuff going on. It's never a dull moment. I um, I when I'm not acting, I teach as well. I teach at a drama school and I teach um, I teach screen acting as well. So I have I'm lighting myself with some lights that I have um, set up for a student I had this morning um so yeah there's always stuff going on always 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 that's wonderful um and i'm off to see next month i'm off to see the enfield haunting uh oh yes with, with Catherine tate in it yeah oh fantastic 
uh, theatre production. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because uh, I, it's the last. I haven't been to theatre in a long time. I have to be honest. The last last theatre production I saw was Lazarus, the David Bowie uh, production. Oh really? Oh wow! It's great you got to see yeah. that. That's so amazing. that's about oh, uh, eight, 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 nine years ago, I think. Was yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. 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 So um, I thought, well, I bet. Well, enjoy, yeah. Enjoy. I better go again, you know. <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of miss it, you know. So yeah, exactly. But that should be fun, hopefully. Uh, the yeah. subject matter's not much fun, but the, it'd be fun to go to theatre again, you know. Exactly. Uh, uh, yeah. So that would be nice. Um, do you get to go to go to theatre much yourself? Yeah, I, I I wish I went more. I, I you know I've got a young family and I'm working around, but I wish I went more. Whenever I can, I'll go and see as much as I can and it is the lifeblood of um of acting and it's the most amazing thing yeah I mean it's lovely going to see a film but I, I would say seeing a play a good play done well is um is the best thing you can do definitely yeah yeah I'm looking forward to it uh, um and I, I I'm I don't know what age group your children are in or even if they watch Doctor Who but will you be sitting down together as a family watching these specials coming up? I I'm not sure they've maybe maybe they maybe they're old enough. I'll see. I, it, yeah, I will definitely see. I'll definitely <clears throat> see how it goes. I think my son was is a bit scared of the idea of the Weeping Angels, so I um I'd have to tread carefully. But yes, yeah. if there's any event to to um bring them back to it, this is. This the these specials are definitely the ones. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going to be very interested to see how it how it how how these pan out these these specials now that Russell T Davis is back for a second go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that yeah, again. I'm, I'm very um yeah I'm very I, I'm very excited. I will definitely. I mean, I'll definitely be checking it out. Yeah, um, and we'll see how the children go. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's lovely to talk to you, Finney. I do really appreciate and you, your time. And you, Frank. It's been great. I wish we had a bit more time. Um, I I got questions, but they're just not coming to me. So uh, okay. uh, well, you can uh, email them to me, and I'll, I'll I'll record my answers, and you can stick. Okay. On. <laughs> How about that? That'd be great. Yeah, yeah. But it's been lovely speaking with you, and and, uh, you, and you. And uh, the rain has stopped a bit now, so that's nice. So if it, oh, it might stop by you. Uh, it's still going strong here. Yeah. It's, for the, for the majority of the interview, it's just been hammering down outside. Boring, yeah. But, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. But it did let up at the end, which is nice, you know. So, um, anyway, Finley, take care and um, You're welcome. welcome. Thank uh, you very much. Very much appreciate it. And, um, and we will be back with some more of these interviews for Doctor Who's 60th anniversary year that we're in now. So, um, um, we'll see you very soon for that. Until then, guys, take care. Thank bye you. Bye bye. Bye bye.